Welcome to Renewing Your Mind with the Word of God podcast, an in-depth study of the Word of God. The program's name is from Romans 12, 2, which says, And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Welcome and welcome back to the Renewing Your Mind with the Word of God podcast, where we are taking a verse by verse, chapter by chapter study of the Word of God, which can only be found in the Bible. Specifically, we are in the book of John, chapter 13, the book of John out of the New Testament, chapter 13. In our last episode, We started the chapter. We looked at verses 1 through 17. Jesus is inching closer and closer to the cross to die for mankind's sin. He's at the last Passover, and we're going to pick up in verse 18 through 30, where he's at his last Passover dinner, which is a continuation of our last episode from verses 1 through 17, where he and his disciples are at Jesus's last Passover dinner. And in that episode, as a recap, before we get into today's verses, Jesus taught his disciples to be humble and to serve others. Even though he's the Lord and he's the master, he washed, he washes his disciples feet. In those days, typically it was reversed. The servants, which the disciples were considered, would have washed the master's feet. But Jesus is giving them an example of what not only they should be doing, but us as followers today of Jesus Christ, an example of we should be humble and to serve others. We also saw in our last episode that in the washing of the feet, Jesus told them that those who are bathed, which was symbolic of salvation, didn't have to keep being bathed. They only had to dust their feet off. In other words, he was laying the foundation or he was telling disciples and us that once you're saved, you don't have to continue to get saved Over and over again, salvation is once and for all eternally. However, since we do live in a fleshly body that has fleshly and worldly desires, there's going to be sin in our life. And when we sin, we can we need to confess that sin, repent of that sin and confess it and ask for forgiveness. And that was symbolic of you saying occasionally we need to wipe our wash our feet to have continued fellowship with him, not to be saved again, but to have being good fellowship with Jesus by repenting and confessing sin. But also, which is going to dovetail into what we're going to talk about today, he also said that there was one among him that among them that was not bathed, and he was referring to Judas, that Judas was not saved, and he was ultimately going to betray our Lord and Savior Jesus. And so that's what we looked at last time. And so we're going to see in this episode, as we look at verses 18 through 30, that Jesus is going to predict Judas's betrayal of him. And so we're going to see how that plays out. So if you have not already done so, if you would open your Bible or your Bible app to chapter 13 of the book of John in the New Testament, and we're going to start at verse 18 and we're going to cover verses 30. We're going to read verses 18 through 30, and then we're going to come back come back and break them down individually. And so let's go to verse 18, which says, and this is Jesus speaking here. I am not referring to all of you. I know those I've chosen, but this is to fulfill this passage of scripture. He who shared my bread has turned against me. Verse 19. I'm telling you now before it happens so that when it does happen, you will believe that I am who I am. Very truly, I tell you, whoever accepts anyone I send accepts me and whoever accepts me, accepts the one who who sent me. Verse number 21. After he said this, Jesus was troubled in spirit and testified. Very truly, I tell you, one of you is going to betray me. His disciples stared at one another at a loss to know which of them he meant. One of them, the disciple whom Jesus loved, was reclining next to him. Simon Peter motioned to this disciple and said, ask him which one he means. Verse 25, leaning back against Jesus, he asked him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, it is the one to whom I will give this piece of bread when I have dipped it in the dish. Then dipping the piece of bread, 
he gave it to Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot. As soon as Judas took the bread, Satan entered into him. So Jesus told him, what you're about to do, do it quickly. But no one at the meal understood why Jesus said this to him. Since Judas had charge of the money, some thought Jesus was telling him to buy what was needed for the festival or to give something to the poor. And then finally, verse number 30, as soon as Judas had taken the bread, he went out and it was night. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, you're a great God. The true God, the only God, the living God, our God. We thank you that you would send your only begotten son to die for our sins, that we may have eternal life. We have forgiveness of sin and we have eternal life with you. That you would make us a new creature. We thank you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your righteousness. We thank you for your presence. Jesus, we thank you for obeying the Father even unto death. That you would give your godly, precious, perfect, sinless life for our mess of a life. We thank you for that. We love you for that. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, as we study your word, we ask that you would open up our ears, our hearts, and our minds to better receive and understand your word and to apply it in our life. We ask that you bless every listener, that they would be empowered by your word. They would come to know you better, come to salvation if salvation is needed renewed interest in you if they've already accepted you your son is their lord and savior father we know that your word would not return void to you we thank you for that we thank you for being god in jesus holy name amen all right so let's now go back to verse number 18 and again to put this in context this is after jesus jesus is still continuing his dialogue with his disciples after washing their feet and also after telling them that one of them has not been bathed, in other words, has not been saved, referring to Judas. And so he's picking back up on that theme. They're at the last Passover dinner. Jesus is making his way to the cross. He's come to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover feast, his last, and to offer his life for our sins. So let's pick up on verse number 18. I am not saying these things to all of you. I know the ones I have chosen. But this fulfilled the scripture that says the one who eats my food has turned against me. And verses 10 through 11, Jesus points out that not all those present for the foot washing were clean. This was a reference to Judas, who had already begun the process of betraying Jesus to the local religious leaders, the Pharisees and the Sadducees. However, Jesus also emphasized that Judas' betrayal is not a surprise because remember, Jesus is all God and all human and by the power of the whole and being guided by the power of the Holy Spirit. So he's not surprised about anything that's going to go on. He's not surprised about anything. He's not surprised that he's going to be betrayed. He's not going to be surprised that by the crowd that when he first came in Jerusalem was saying, Hosanna, Hosanna is going to start saying, crucify him, crucify him. He's not surprised by any of these things. And he's letting his disciples know, nor did Jesus make a mistake when he chose Judas to be a part of his inner circles. Remember, Jesus chose every one of these men that's sitting at the table. They didn't volunteer them. They just didn't come up and made themselves a disciple. Jesus chose them. Jesus chose Judas. And that's what he's telling them. Jesus knew when he was he knew what he was doing and who he was choosing. That's what he's telling them. And in a latter part of that verse, when it says to fulfill the scripture, the one who eats my food has turned against me. He's telling them what's happening has was already predicted that one of his inner circle is going to portray him. Specifically, he's quoting or referring to Psalms 41, nine out of the Old Testament, which which all the Old Testament points towards Jesus. Psalm 41, nine, which says, even my close friend, someone I trusted. One who shared my bread has turned against me. That was referencing to Judas. Even in the Old Testament, it told, foretold of one of his inner circle would turn against him. And so he's telling them all these things. And when they look back, because they don't know what's going on now, they're living in the moment and his disciples really don't know what's going on. But when they go back, 
And they, when they get empowered by the Holy Spirit and they go back and look at all the events that happened while they were Jesus is going to come to these things are going to come back to them. And they're going to realize that light bulb is going to go off and they realize, ah, that's what he's talking about. And so that's what he's telling them in verse number 18. Moving on to verse number 19. I tell you this beforehand so that when it happens, you will believe that I am the Messiah. Jesus knows that Judas impending portrayal would catch the other disciples totally off guard because as we're going to see as this plays out, no one thinks it's Judas. No one thinks it's Judas. Jesus words are meant to ease their panic because they're going to go back and look and realize what he's talking about. And when he say these things play out, he's like, Hey, I told you. And in telling him, I told you among these other things that you've seen for yourself that I am who I say I am the Messiah. Verse number 20, I tell you the truth. Anyone who welcomes my messenger is welcoming me. And anyone who welcomes me is welcoming the father who sent me. And these words are a little different from what I were when I read, when I read verses 18 through 30, I was reading from the NIV. I was meant to read from the new living translation because when I go back and break down the verses I'm quoting now are from the new living translation. But when I read it, all together, verses 18 through 30 out of John chapter 13, I was reading from the NIV. So that's why the words are going to be slightly different. But going back to verse 20, which says, I tell you the truth. Anyone who welcomes my messenger is welcoming me. And anyone who welcomes me is welcoming the father who sent me. The gospel is God's message that he's chosen to be carried by imperfect people. And those who listen to the preaching of the gospel are true believers who are true believers. They're listening to Christ and to listen to Christ is to listen to God. That's what he's telling them. That's what we tell us. He's telling us in this verse. That his message. Is for believers It's for people to believe and it's from him. They're listening to him. When you listen to these verses and you read the Bible and you listen to him, Jesus, you're listening to God because God is the one who sent him. God, the father who sent him. Verse number 21. Now, Jesus was deeply troubled and he exclaimed, I tell you the truth. One of you will betray me. He went out and just said it. One of you are going to betray me. Again, he's speaking to this. He's at this last Passover dinner and they're reclining. I said seated. But in those days, they didn't sit at a table like we do today in America. They reclined. And so he's speaking about what is going to happen to him. And it brings him emotional pain because he said he was deeply troubled about what Judas is planning to do. And it was already in the process of doing of betrayal. And he goes out and he just come out and tells them that one of you are going to betray them. Betray me. Verse number 22. The disciples looked at each other wondering whom. He could mean. We get a little more detail in Matthew, specifically Matthew 26, verse 22 where we're told that each one of the disciples wondered and asked, is it me? So that's interesting. We get insight that those 12 disciples who had spent three years with Jesus, witnessed the miracles, the teachings, and still wondered. They knew in, the, in their imperfect selves that they were any one of them, not just Judas, any one of them was capable of betraying Jesus because they had to ask and had to wonder them to themselves. Could it be me? But yet we learned and we saw earlier that Jesus loved these imperfect men. You do not have to be perfect to have saving, saving faith in Jesus Christ. He didn't die for us because we're perfect. He died for us because we're not perfect. That he could put his perfect righteousness on us. That we could have everlasting, everlasting life and forgiveness of sin. So you don't have to be perfect to come to God. These men weren't, and he loved them. He died for them. He died for me. He died for you in your imperfection. Verse number 20, we're going to look at verse number 23 and 24 together. Disciples, the disciples Jesus loved, the disciple Jesus loved was sitting or reclining, some translations say, next to Jesus at the table. Verse 24, Simon Peter motioned to him to ask, who He's talking about, as I mentioned earlier, meals in this era or this time were eaten in a reclining position, typically laying on the left side and eating with the right hand. So they're not sitting in, in chairs. 
as we often see in these paintings. The person Peter is speaking to is John himself, who's on Jesus's right, facing away. So Peter is sitting far enough away from Jesus that he could not whisper to Jesus to ask him himself. So Peter asked John to ask Jesus who he was referring to that's going to betray him. And when it says the one that Jesus loved, this is John referring to himself. This is John, the book of John, one of the original disciples of John. Excuse me, Jesus is John. And often John referred to himself as the one that Jesus loved. He's referring to himself. So when you see in verse number 23, the disciple Jesus loved was sitting or reclining next to Jesus at the table. That is John, the author of this book. So Peter is far enough from Jesus. So he asked John to ask Jesus who he's referring to. So that's verses 23, 24. Let's look at verse number 25. So that disciple, John, leaned over to Jesus and asked, Lord, who is he? Who is he? No one is suspecting Judas at this time. Matter of fact, we learn in Matthew, they're wondering and asking themselves, is it me, Jesus? So John as he described himself as the one that Jesus loved, John, he asked Jesus, Lord, who is it? Who is this going to portray you? And we get Jesus' reply in verse number 26. Jesus responded, it is the one to whom I give the bread I dip in the bowl. And when he dipped it, he gave it to Judas, son of Simon Iscariot. As was the custom during that time, the men are reclining on their left side around the food around this table that places John to the right of Jesus facing away from him. In order to ask his question, John must lean back. As we saw in verse 25, John was probably hearing Jesus better than anyone else because he was close to him and where they were reclining, but he's in an awkward position to see. So where he, he, he can speak to Jesus way Jesus was facing away from him. John does not seem to notice what Jesus is doing when he give and dip the, the bread and give it to Judas. Because he's facing in the wrong direction. He can't see him. He can, John can hear what he's saying and they can hear one another. But when John, when Jesus give this overt action of dipping the bread, as he said, I'm going to dip this bread and I'm going to give it to the person who's going to betray me, which he did to Judas. John didn't see it. And this was explained why neither John nor the others realized what, who Jesus was identifying. Because it apparently no one heard what Jesus said, and no, and even though they saw Jesus give the dip the bread and give it to Judas, they didn't know what it meant. And the reason why we know that because as it plays out, no one is gonna, no one is saying, "Ah, oh, it's it's Judas." As we're gonna see later on, when Judas leaves the table, they thinking he's going to do some good work. They have no idea he's going to betray Jesus. He's going out to do finish what he's already started the process of doing of betraying Jesus. Betraying Jesus. All right, let's look at verses number 27 and 28 together. When Judas had eaten the bread, Satan entered into him. Then Jesus told him, hurry and do what you're going to do. Verse 28, none of the others at the table knew what Jesus meant. Jesus tell the same possessed Judas to hurry to accomplish his treachery, his betrayal. However, it's clear from the verse that none of the other men, none of the other disciples put it all together. What was going on? They couldn't either hear or they couldn't they couldn't see what was going on the way they was reclining at this table. But Matthew, again, include details that John does not. So that's how we get it all together, because John Matthew gives us some more details of what happened. And matter of fact, in Matthew and specifically Matthew 26 and 25, Judas asked Jesus directly, was he talking to him? Judas, Judas looked at Jesus and said, you talking to me? And Jesus said, and he asked him, yeah. So Jesus told, we get this in Matthew, not in John. We get this in Matthew that Jesus told Judas it was him. And then in response to Judas' question whether or not it was him. Now, we don't get that in John, but from the other gospel, we were able to put it together. But we also are able to get the other men because they had no idea Jesus was talking to Judas or referring to Judas. Verse number 29. Since Judas was with their treasurer, some thought that Jesus was telling him to go and pay for the food or to give some money to the poor. We learned that Judas role in the inner circle was that he was the treasurer of the group. He kept the money and he was stealing. We also going to learn he was stealing. 
The other men have no idea that Judas is a false believer. He's already made plans to betray Jesus for some more money. He was all about the money. And those who heard Jesus telling Jesus to hurry up or to act quickly assumed nothing about it. They didn't think anything about it. They didn't, they didn't know Jesus was telling him, go ahead and finish what you started as far as betraying me. But since he's leaving at Jesus' request, or it seems, the other men has presumed that he's going to do some good. That he's going to give to the poor. They suggest, or they apparently believe that Judas was leaving to do something good because Jesus told him to do it. They had no idea he was going to betray him. And then finally in verse number 30, so Judas left at once going out into the night. When John says that Judas went into the night, it's much more, it's not just a minor detail thrown in for no reason. Jesus has pointed out that the one who betray him is lost. He's in darkness. So Judas going into the night is symbolic of Judas stepping into his destruction, being lost, being in the dark. That's what it's symbolic of. So John wasn't just saying that for the sake of saying it. He was saying when you're not in salvation, when you've not accepted Jesus Christ and your Lord and Savior, you're in darkness as we've seen earlier. You're lost. And while that was Judas' faith, if you're listening to this now, that didn't have to be in your, your faith. You can come into the light by accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. He died for your sins. And make no mistake about it, all of us are sinners from birth and then from our own action. But God, the Father, loved us so much that he would not leave us in our sin, that he would offer that sacrificial lamb, his perfect son, to die for our sins, to atone for our sins, because there have to be a, that penalty has to be paid. And there's going to be two ways it's going to be paid. Either accept Jesus Christ for paying it for you, that he's died on that cross for you to pay your debt, or you pay it yourself. And you don't want to have to pay that yourself. The best thing for you to do is accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. He died for you. He died for me. And you can do that right now. If you have not done it, today is the day of salvation. Do not harden your heart, as the Bible says. Today is the day of salvation. And if you're listening to this and you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that you died for your sins, and you just feel something in your heart is saying, I believe that. I believe in that man named Jesus. I believe that he died for my sins. I believe that. Well, say this after me. Father God, in your son Jesus' name, I am a sinner and a and I repent. And I believe and now confess that Jesus died for my sins, that he's your only begotten son, perfect, and that he died for my sins. I also believe that you raised him from the from the dead because he was perfect, sinless. Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and Savior because you died for my sins. Forgive my sins. In your name, amen. And if you've said that and you believe it according to God, imperfect and holy righteous word you are now saved a new creature you've been born again of the spirit and a new spirit that will live forever you may not feel like it you may not look like it you may not think it but you are not because of me but because of God and his word said that you are and, his, and he cannot lie it's not about a feeling it's not about how you feel it's about believing and obeying God's word. And he said, if you believe, if you confess with your mouth and believe with your heart that Jesus is Lord, you shall be saved. That you die for your sins, you shall be saved. And he did. And if you did that, you ought to rejoice. You ought to rejoice. You have everlasting life. You have a new future. You have a heavenly father. 
my new Lord and Master, Jesus, the best there is. The best there is. You could not have made a better decision. How wonderful and how great. Thank you, Lord, for him. Thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you for them. We thank you that you would die for our sins. and We would have an opportunity to confess you, to believe in you, to call upon you. We thank you for that. It's all because of you. In Jesus' holy name. Until next time, may God bless you. Amen. We pray that this Bible study has blessed you. If you have a prayer request, you can email it to renewyourmindm at gmail.com or mail it to P.O. Box 721143, Jackson, Mississippi, 39272. Remember, you can hear current and past episodes at any time on our website of renewyourmindministries.org or on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Alexa, Audible, and Google Podcasts. We encourage you to tell others about the program and share our website of renewyourmindministries.org. Jesus says in Mark 16, 15, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. By telling others about the program, you are doing your part to spread the gospel into all the world about our Lord and Savior, Jesus. Until next time, this has been Renewing Your Mind with the Word of God.